Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to talk about a, a very cute little device called the Max 7219. The Max 7219 is an 8 digit 7 segment LED controller. You know those uh, LEDs you see in your alarm clocks. Well, uh, what this device does is it connects via the SPI interface to, say, an ESP32. And from the ESP32, we send it control signals. And uh, some or all of the eight segments, or I'm sorry, the eight digits of the seven segment LEDs light up to show numbers. So this is a great way to provide counters or a clock or some other kind of... Uh, uh, LED display, nice, very bright, powerful outputs. Now the LED displays plus the Max 7219 integrated circuit, they can be bought on eBay as modules from just a couple of dollars. I mean, not very much at all. Or you can buy the Max 7219 just by itself. And again, it's just uh, very, very, very cheap. So the notion is that, as I say, it's a uh, seven segment, eight digit display driver. And uh, if one was to read the data sheet, one would find that the way to drive it is not very complicated. But fortunately, we've provided a sample um, a class that does just that. So we've provided a sample class called, unsurprisingly, Max7219. And you create an instance of this class, specify your SPI driver, and then you've got operations such as clearing the display or setting the digit or even displaying up to an eight digit number on your display. So here, for example, is a simple program. This program starts up, uh, creates an instance of the Max 7219, switches on the display, sets the brightness of the display, and then calls this subroutine which uh, takes the number, starts at zero, displays the number in the LEDs, adds one to it, sleeps for a hundredth of a second, and then uh, sh uh, sh uh, goes around the loop again. And here in the display, here on the screen, you see a video of my uh, eight digit, seven segment LED ticking up. I mean, that's all there is to it. It's just uh, whatever, whatever number we set here is the number that's displayed on the digits of the LED. Well, if that wasn't enough, there's another feature of uh, this Max 7219 I want to talk about. And that is that when we think about a seven segment LED, there's actually eight segments. There's seven segments for each of the LED components of, an, of a single digit plus a decimal point. So there's actually eight segments in each number, each digit in the uh, uh, seven segment LED story. Now, since this Max 7219 can drive eight of them, that's eight LED parts times eight digits, or 64, that's 64 individual LED components. Now the Max 7219, can also drive 64 individual LEDs. So we can find that we can buy matrices, eight by eight matrices, with a combined Max 7219, and then we can uh, wire those into our uh, uh, ESP32s. And again, the these modules, oh, they're they're usually about a dollar sixty-two or a dollar eighty. You can buy them very very cheaply, or you can buy them in groups of uh, four or eight or more. And uh, you can buy uh, you, you can buy this here. This is the one I use. A dollar thirty-eight for uh, the the module, the Max Seven Two One Nine pins, and an LED uh, dis, uh, uh, matrix component. So very, very cheap. Here's 10 of them for $13. So let's uh, let's have a look at a program to control these. I'll change my application program away from test seven segment to test eight by eight. And here's my logic here. And um, what I do is I loop around forever. And I go through the X axis and I go through the Y axis. And every time we go through the Y axis, uh, I call, the, every time we go through this loop, I call set LED to uh, an addressable point within the 8x8 matrix, switch it on, uh, sleep for a hundredth of a second, switch it off, increment along the y-axis, and then go around the loop again. And then when we hit the end of the row, I switch direction, and we go back again. Now, let's see what that looks like on an actual display. 
So let's compile this changed application. Let's uh, run it up and let's see what we see. Oops, got something wrong there. Let's see. Oh, yes, I changed the code. Call test 8x8. Now that should have worked. Let's see what I did wrong. Well, oh, duh, I forgot to save it. Save the application. Control S, save the application. Reflash it. Bring it up again. And let's see this time. And lo and behold, now if we look at the uh, the video, we can nicely see the LED is ticking along, going backwards and forwards to handle the the processing. So again, this is just one pixel in my 8x8 LED, but it's cycling back and forwards and again, quite an attractive effect. So what we wanted to show here was the use of the Max 7219, very cheap IC, you can buy it on pre-made modules. There's a class available for it where we can drive it directly from the ESP IDF. Uh, and what else? Oh yes, one more thing I want to say. Although you're seeing me drive this through uh, 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 pre-built modules, which are LED 7 segments or 8x8 matrices, there's nothing to prevent you from driving your own LEDs in this fashion. So use a raw Max 7219 and you can drive uh, up to 64 distinct LEDs without having to wire in resistors and use up 64 GPIO pins, etc, etc. So by wiring these together uh, because what we've got here is a, a kind of uh, pulse width modulation to control these uh, the maximum uh, output pins you'll need is 16 for an 8x8 matrix so you can drive a lot of pins I'm sorry the output pins from the max 7219 are two banks of uh, uh, eight pins uh, but you only need two pins uh, for your SPI driver on your ESP32. Basically, uh, this is an input-only device, so you only need the master out, slave in. You don't need the master in, slave out. And you need a clock. So really, that's all there is to drive this from an ESP32 perspective. Uh, two lines from the ESP32, driving an individual Max 7219, which can drive up to 64 distinct LEDs individually. Hope you found something useful here and look forward to more videos in the future. Thanks now, guys, and bye-bye.